Hi, Mike McMillan here, and today I am going to test six different microphones that you might want to consider using in your YouTube videos. So the way this works is, to begin with, I've made six test clips, audio test clips. Um, they're only about eight or ten seconds each, and so it, in just a second it'll say test one. There will be a WAV file that shows the progress of the recording, and, and you can watch the WAV file as it's being recorded there. And uh, then, after you've watched all six of those, and I'm not going to tell you which microphone I'm using in those, because I, I want you to be impartial and listen and see which one you think is sounding the best. So after the test audios, then I'll go to microphone one, I'll show you the microphone, I'll show you how I set it up, what I liked, what I didn't like for each one. You'll learn some things along the way, I'm sure. So, um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get started right now. So we have three cats. Stasha is black and white, Emmett is black and white, and our newest cat we just call Cat is a gray and white cat. Okay, well people ask me about color of vehicles. I think for pickup trucks, bright red is a great color. For SUVs, I like black. And for smaller, getting around uh, town and taking trips, uh, I would go with silver. Download my free ebook, Grow Your YouTube Channel Fast, with my 20 top YouTube hacks. The link is in the description below. Typically in Michigan, um, the temperatures can get very cold in the winter from zero up to 40 degrees. Typically in the summer, it could run anywhere from 60 up to 90 degrees. Well, what about sports? My all-time favorite sport of all is baseball. I played baseball in elementary school, middle school, high school, and to this day, I'm a huge baseball fan. So YouTube is a fantastic place to get exposure for your videos, to upload videos and Expose the entire world to your content and hopefully get subscribers and views. So what I'm trying to do in this video is to give you some ideas for different types of microphones that you might want to consider in your own YouTube videos. Okay, the first example, and I'm sure this is not something you want to do, but just to give us sort of a data point, a point of comparison with the other real microphones, I'm recording this on the internal mic on my Mac. Um, this sounds a little tinny to me. You have to talk pretty loud, or the way I'm talking now, it just doesn't come out as loud as I'd like it to. But uh, yeah, so this can just be our comparison point for the other mics, and that's why I did this. Okay, good. Okay, well, in the second test that you heard just a minute ago, uh, that was a blue snowball USB condenser mic that I was using, and I'm using that right now too, so you can hear the sound again. I'm using the number one setting on the back, and I'll show you what that means in just a second. I'll show you the setting and how you can you know, adjust that. Um, that's called a cardioid setting, and I'll show you that too. So, But this is 59 It's only $59 on Amazon. It has a 4.6 out of 5 star rating, so people basically like it. Uh, you get pretty good sound. I'm, I'm pretty happy occasionally I'll use this. This is not the, my go-to microphone, but um, for $59 it's not bad and the sound is not bad. Now, on the back of this uh, there are three settings and I am on setting number one and it's called a, it's a cardioid setting and that's just the shape of the area that you can pick up and on that setting you can have the mic right in front of you or you can be off a little bit on either side and it will pick it up. Okay, so the number two setting in the Blue Snowball mic has a cardioid pattern too, but it also has what they call a 10 decibel pad or attenuator, which just means it reduces the output level by about 10 decibels. This could be useful in recordings, audio recordings, that you're doing where there's a very, very loud noise in parts of the recording and you don't want that to overwhelm, you know, any spoken words or anything else in there. So it just takes the output down. I don't use that for what I do, but you might find that useful. Okay. And then the number three setting is a uh, omnidirectional setting. And all that means is the microphone picks up from the front, the back, and both sides, which could be useful maybe if you had a partner doing the recording with you, sitting next to you, or across a desk from you, or something like that, where you want to pick up uh, audio from multiple directions, okay? And again, I don't use that, but you might find it useful. So those are what the three settings do. 
and the the blue snowball mic is a good um not just a starter mic it's a good professional microphone that could be though a good starter mic for you because it's low cost doesn't cost much it delivers good quality sound and uh, it has you know these different settings that you can use uh, for different functions you may be involved in so consider that and think about it that might be a good choice for you okay well the third microphone test that I did I used this this is really my go-to microphone that I use uh, almost every day and this is called a zoom h4n pro that's what I'm recording with right now and I in this recording I was using the internal microphones there are two of those and I'll show you those right here they're both up at the top of the unit one aims a little off to the left one a little to the right um, and those are the internal microphones now this is more than a microphone it's also a recording device it's extremely versatile. Um, the downside is it is about $200. It's $219 on Amazon with a 4.7 out of 5 star rating. And uh, it's, it's just people that use this love it, okay? And so that's what I'm using right now. Now, the way that uh, this works is when you turn this on, it starts recording and it, there is on the side right here you can see there's an SD card in the side and it stores your recording on the card one way to put that onto your computer is to take the SD card out and pop it into your computer well you've got a Mac or a PC you slide it into the SD card slot and then you can download that file and put it into your editing software and you know use that um, the sound is very good I I believe the sound is very good I'm going to show you two ways to use this device um, but uh, yeah so right now I've got it turned on I'm recording and um, I, I love my zoom unit it's it's just tremendous and it's very very versatile um, this is one of the ways to record with it I'll show you the other way in the next section but uh, I can't say enough about this it's a, it's a great recording device and it has great microphones okay very good okay well whoa this is the same microphone we did in test three isn't it yeah but I made one important change here and rather than recording from the internal microphones like we did in the last uh, test this time I've plugged a lavalier mic in and uh, yeah, the H4N Pro, it's $219 on Amazon, but this lavalier mic, uh, and by way, there's a link to all of these products, Amazon links, in the description below this video. Um, this is a 3.5 millimeter, 1 8 inch uh, lav mic. It's about $23, $24 on Amazon. And here's, okay, so here's where you plug it into the back. And once you plug it in, then you can clip it onto your shirt, the microphone onto your shirt. Um, and then when you begin recording, it picks up the sound not from the internal mics, but from this lav mic. Now, the advantage to this, and what I use it for a lot of times, like if you want to stand up and against a white wall, a white screen, or doing green screen work or something like that, where you've got to be moving around and you're shooting you know, a video of you standing there talking, blah, 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 and you want to take a step to one side or the other side, we well, can't really be holding a microphone in front of you when you're doing that for a YouTube video. Um, so this way, uh, it's either 15 or 20 feet of microphone cord, so you've got plenty of cord to move around and be active while you're recording. Uh, so again, this is the sound, and I'm using this lavalier mic right now um, on this section of the video. And uh, you can see the sound is pretty good. It's a little different than the internal microphones. Um, sometimes I think it's a little maybe deeper, and you have to remember the microphone is up close to your chest where some of the, some of the sound is coming out. And um, so, you know, it doesn't really get muddy, but it, it has a little bit different tone than the internal microphones. But I like it a lot, especially for stand-up work and if you've got to move around. Uh, this is this is the way to go. So uh, yeah, this is my H4N Pro microphone with a lavalier mic 
attached to it. By the way, there are different settings. I have this set on, I think it's on 60% right now. I could really boost the sound up. If I put it on 100, it would start clipping. That's That would be way too loud for what I'm doing now. But yeah, anyway, this is a good uh, product. The lav mic uh, works great. And uh, the mic itself is very inexpensive. Okay, good. Okay, so right now I'm using my um, Pile dynamic microphone. And this is different because all the other microphones that we've used here that I've showed you today are all what are called condenser mics. Now, dynamic microphones are a little bit different. And what's different about them is the way they're constructed inside. Um, and you need to be aware of some things if you decide to use a dynamic mic. Now, podcasters use these. Singers, I'm sure you've seen singers using dynamic mics. Um, uh, YouTubers use them. But there are a couple things to keep in mind. With a dynamic mic, you have to be close. Uh, I try to keep two or three inches away from the microphone when I'm speaking. And a couple other things is they have a very, very low output. Okay, the signal, the sound that you're going to capture from a dynamic mic would be very, very, very tiny. Okay, it's just the way they're made. It's how they work. So to use a dynamic mic, if you decide to go with one, keep a couple things in mind. You can't do this. Okay, if you move from side to side and you move it out of the right in front of you, the volume falls way off as you can see, okay? If you move it away from your mouth and get out six, eight, ten inches away, the volume falls way off too, okay? Even if you tip the microphone like this and you're talking like this, the volume will fall way off. You need to keep it right in front of your face, aimed right at your mouth when you speak into it. Now, there's something else about dynamic microphones that I want to share with you that's extremely important. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So as I mentioned, dynamic microphones produce a very, very weak output signal. Um, it's just because of their design. That's the way that they are. And the signal is too weak to use in your YouTube recordings, your podcasts or something, um, the way that it is. So the solution to that, <clears throat> what people would do, is use a thing called a device called a preamp or a preamplifier. And all that does is it increases the gain of the signal and gives you a signal that's loud enough, that's big enough, to uh, make it useful, okay? And typically a preamp can boost a signal anywhere from 20 to 50 decibels, depending on the kind that you get. Um, and to find a preamp, I would suggest that you go to Amazon. Okay, well, I'm on Amazon. I just did a search right up here uh, for microphone preamps. And what comes up, there are about four pages of these devices. Um, some are specifically preamps. Some are mixer boards that may have a preamp built in. Um, uh, there are some different things mixed in here, but what you're looking for is something that specifically says it's a preamp for microphones. And you can scroll through these. It depends on the microphone you've got. I can't tell you which one's the best one, but um, read through these carefully so that you know exactly you know what you're getting before you buy anything like that. So there, okay, that's basically what you need to use a uh, dynamic type microphone. And uh, if that's the route that you want to go on, um, you can go for it. Okay, very good. Okay, well, this is my Marantz MPM-1000 uh, condenser microphone. Like all condenser microphones, it requires power. Um, my lavalier mic has a little inline battery, a little 1.5 volt battery you have to put in there. My snowball mic that we use, that draws power out of your computer. And uh, this Marantz unit uh, requires outside power. So I'm, I've plugged it into my uh, H4N Pro. You could plug it into, into an audio box uh, somewhere, but it requires what they call phantom power. And uh, so I'm drawing power out of my H4N Pro unit for this. Now, here's what it looks like. This is, it has a, comes with an XLR cable, and one end plugs into the microphone. The other end plugs into the uh, H4N 
Pro unit or if you've got any kind of audio box that you can plug it into to get power. Um, this is this is a good microphone for $49. You get great sound out of it. I really like it. Um, you could you could you could spend four or five hundred dollars on a somewhat similar microphone and be hard pressed to tell the difference. Um, so this is one of my I use this off and on. Uh, I like the microphone. I like the sound. For $49, uh, you can't beat it. And it has a 4.6 out of 5 star rating on Amazon. So uh, yeah, this is one of my good guys. I really like it. Uh, if you're thinking about a microphone, think about this one. It's a good starter for a uh, good starter mic for YouTube. If you want to pay the big bucks and get a, a big, you know, top of the line pro microphone, you could do that, but don't do that right out of the gate. Uh, this is a good starter microphone. I like it. Okay, very good.